Morning, Trainiacs! Morning! We're back! Come on, Grace. It's cold. Oh, off the top rope and inside. Oh, it's nice to see these guys again. It's nice to see you again from here in the pain cave. So a couple weeks ago in like the 72 hours that I was here last time, I did a video about fasted workouts, low carb, high fat, not keto. I'll talk about that in a bit, but mentioned fasted workouts. And what I created was a cheat sheet for when, if, how you might consider doing fasted workouts. Let's just do a quick video. I'll go through that. So in that video that I did a couple weeks ago, I talked about how fasted workouts becoming more fat adapted, being able to oxidize fat as in use more fat as fuel has played in some studies as much as a 50% difference in the variation between how well or poorly some subjects did in an Ironman. Dan Plews, who is a sports scientist, has looked into low carb, high fat adaptation very, very extensively, studied it a lot, and he's actually the current age group Kona champion. He set the all time age group course record in Kona this past year. And he says that it's undeniable that being able to oxidize fat is clearly linked to better performance in endurance sports. So how can we do that? Well, one way that we can improve our ability to oxidize fat as fuel is by doing some fasted workouts. Some being the key. So why is it just some workouts and why is it not ketogenesis? Well, in both cases, we want to maintain proper overall health and hormone levels. Combining endurance sports training with a low carb diet, it does allow for some issues with overall health. I won't mention the pro that I heard this about recently, but there was a pro last year that in the years leading up to 2018 was showing huge signs of potential. Last year, showed up to race after race after race, underperformed, and I watched him underperform, and I was like, why is this happening? He couldn't figure it out, publicly he said, I don't really know what's going on, and then it was uncovered that in the morning, you just didn't feel hungry, you would go and do every single workout fasted, and he just buried himself, underperformed, got sick, got injured, and this is the potential that I want to keep you away from. I want you to be that athlete that keeps getting better without such a huge possibility of being sick. Now I know that as soon as I start talking about fasted workouts or high fat, low carb, or ketogenesis, everyone out there that's read about it turns into a scientist. Now I am just going to be giving you my opinion based off of what I have researched from quite a number of sources. It's not to say it's totally right and it's not to say that it's your experience and that anything you know or have experienced is wrong. This is just my stuff, so don't get all angry in the comments, all right? Let's get into the cheat sheet. So if you want to get this cheat sheet and you don't wanna to listen to me yet for the next few minutes, go to triathlonterran.com forward slash fasted cheat sheet and you can just download it there. Also, caveat to this is this fasted cheat sheet is very, very cautious and I would recommend speaking to a nutritionist or some sort of professional to make sure that you don't have any hormone issues coming into this. Also, I'm not a doctor. I am now a certified sports nutrition specialist. I think that's what it's called. 
But because I'm not giving this advice to any of you individually, consult your local professional. Let's get into it. First thing, the way that I've designed this is with a series of yes, no questions and based off of your yes, no answers, you will have some guidance for if, when, and how to do and get the most out of fasted workouts. And the first question is, are you a man? If you are a man, proceed. If you are a woman, exercise extreme caution with doing fasted workouts. Fasted workouts are quite a bit more taxing on the female body and there have actually been studies that show that fasted workouts do the opposite to what they're intended. So for men, fasted workouts can improve fat oxidation and fat utilization. For women, it has actually in some cases appeared to be better to come into a workout with food and then fast after. It's actually a good thing. It means that you don't have to work as hard to burn fat. Next question, is your workout an extremely easy recovery workout? If it is, go ahead and consider a fasted workout. If it's intense, you probably want some nutrition coming into that workout. Now it doesn't have to be super high carb, can be low carb, but you do want to give your body some fuel in those harder workouts so that you can perform and you don't want to be digging yourself into a hole by trying to perform at a high level at a depleted state. So fasted workouts are a sometimes thing, not an all the time thing as was indicated by that pro athlete that I talked about earlier. After the workout, there are two things that I want you to do. One is mandatory, which is get some refuel nutrition into your body within 20 minutes of the workout. This is ideally somewhere in the four to one carb to protein ratio, about 120 to 180 calories. Next thing that is optional, that is for bonus points, that I'm going to do, I'll tell you about in a bit. But let's take a step back and go back to that scenario where you're not doing a light workout, you're doing a more difficult workout and you want some nutrition beforehand. That doesn't mean that you can't get any of the benefits by using fasting. What you can do is ask another question. If you have come into a workout eating some nutrition, it's a hard workout, Ask this next question. Are you working out within the next 12 hours? If you are working out within the next 12 hours, again, go back and refuel within the 20 minutes after that workout so that you can get your body repairing itself, top back up immediately after that workout. But let's say you're in the case that you fueled properly coming into a hard workout. You had a hard workout and maybe it is 4 p.m. at the end of a work day and you don't have a training session to do until the next morning, then by all means, you can wait anywhere between about 120 and 150 minutes, probably until dinner, until you have to do your next meal. You don't have to refuel and get those gains immediately after the workout because if you end up staying in that slightly depleted state for a little while, but you had fueled coming into it, you can actually get a significant increase in your growth hormones and this will help stimulate getting stronger after the workout. So those are some, but not all of the guidelines. I'll show you the final little bonus guideline in a second. But if you want to get that flow chart of yes, no, with guidance of when to eat, what time frames to eat, which workouts to eat before or after. Like I say, go to triathlonterran.com forward slash fasted cheat sheet. Now I'm going to finish this workout and fast forward to the bonus tip now. This is it. This is the last little bonus thing. If you really want to ramp up your fat burning, 
after a fasted workout, before you eat, do some cold exposure for anywhere from two to three minutes. Oh. Sit outside when it's minus 22 Celsius or get into a cold plunge, a bathtub full of ice or cold shower. I don't like the cold showers, especially during the winter. But with this, cold plunge or just sitting outside, you can get freezing cold, burn a bunch of fat, and then go into a hot shower, get your core temperature right for the day. All right, Trainiacs, I got another two and a half minutes out here. Go to triathlonterran.com forward slash fasted cheat sheet <laughs> and trim yourself up. Get cut. Oh man. Oh, that wind. Oh, that wind. Oh. Later, Trainiacs.